Welcome to another episode of Living with FASD, Candid Conversations with Patty Casper, and not just any old episode. Today, this with this recording, it is the first episode of, drumroll, season two. I've been doing this for an entire year, and I can't think of anyone I would rather ring in my second year with than my bestie, Jody Culp. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Jody, welcome back to Living with FASD. Thanks, Patty. Yeah, I can't believe it's been a year already. That just blows my mind. So, we are now officially in the second year of Living with FASD, and there are so many things to look forward to. Um, with this summer season of recordings and also um, just everything that we have cooking to gear up for um, International FASD Awareness Month come September. So on this show, which is for those of us who are living with FASD and our loved ones and anyone else interested in learning more about fetal alcohol spectrum disorders, tell me, Jody, what have you got going on? So we've got uh, two big things, which, of course, have many pieces and many parts, and we'll be sharing them, not me, but the rest of the team, um, a large, uh, not a large, but an, a, a knowledgeable group of us got together. And, you know, we're at that point in life where our 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 time is, is in the more in the twilight time of our life than it is in the beginning. And we started, you know, boots on the ground running with passion and and we continue um, in this season with passion too, but wanting to leave our legacy, wanting to make sure that all the all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed and that we are we are leaving the next generation with what they need. So yeah, we have two things that are huge. One is launching Zach, um, which is uh, a, a composite um, boy that's 18 years old. So right at the transitioning time. And we are launching him in transmedia. So that means... Uh, my job was writing the novel. Uh, Joel's and and Carl Joel Chagrin and Carl Young are doing a parenting book written by fathers. Is that cool or what? That is awesome. I know. Um, and um, and Justin Overlander is doing embracing Zach and has finished the screenplay. So um, the those are three things that are coming together. But on top of that, um, my my editing team, which. You guys are awesome, by the way. We call ourselves <laughs> meliorists yeah. because we believe there's there's things that we can do to make the world better. Um, Antonio's producing uh, Parenting Your Porcupine, which is a, a, a book for parents and therapists. So it's a book for therapists to really get an idea of how to help families and parents and for parents to get a better understanding of, of what they can do to help their kids. Yeah. Um, that's one. Deb Evanson is doing um, 13 Moons, which is an educator book. And we are so excited for that one because educators, oh, they just need what she's got to give. And she's got years and years of experience. And then Patty, you yeah. are doing your revision of Sip, Sip by Sip, Sip, which is candid conversations for with people with lived experience. And yes, I volunteered. I volunteered to put myself in there. Um, you know, for so long, I, I kept quiet and the story's there. So read it. Anyway, so back to my place, because this is where I'm at. My project, Embracing Zach, is the novel. And, oh, and I have to knit it with the screenplay. So unusual, but um, usually books are written and then screenplays are written. In this case, the book was written, a screenplay was written, and I had the opportunity to work together with the, the um, writer of the screenplay and tie the book and the screenplay more closely together, which yeah. is not easy. <laughs> it's really, really yeah. not easy because uh, two different languages, your your screenplay is, is active, present, first person doing it right now. And of course, a book has may have a different voice. So yeah. that was that was complicated. And uh, there's things you put in a screenplay that our our, our populations expect. And, you know, I may choose not to put it in the book or I may choose to write it differently. Those are um, some big things. 
Yeah. The, the second, and you could ask me on we go, the second piece, the second piece is launching uh, Red Shoes Rock. And this year we are lighting up the world. And I just want to do a shout out to France Avenue in Edina, Minnesota, because they are lighting up their avenue in red on um, June 1st, which is our kickoff. And that's my daughter's birthday. So it's kind of 99 days to run up to September 9th, but it's also a celebration to say, hey, kiddo, you've got another year. So, um, yeah. and she's she's been struggling as as her organs have shut down and, you know, hoping by by July, we'll hear if there's an opportunity for transplant. Big, big step, big change yeah. and um, big uh, possible opportunity for people with lived experience that hasn't yeah. existed. And uh, I'll say one side and then I'll go to your questions. Um, mm -hmm. I think the most important thing for that was when we finally were able to flip psychology and psychological issues to neurology and biological organic issues. And that took us well, a lifetime, yeah. but, but it took us also significantly time in the last five years where we needed the neurology organic piece in place and it wasn't. So yeah. um, shout out to my daughter for, being the brave warrior and standing as strong as she can through this. So yeah. Patty, it's yours. You ask me questions and I'll go. <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> I wanted to, to just join you in a couple of the things that you said. Um, one was the reference to our ages for those of us on, on our team um, and legacy leaving, right? Because I think I am the youngest Yes, of us, and I'm 60. And I've been saying for years that I waited till the sunset of my career before I found my passion and training. Um, and but that is, you know, what we what we are doing. We are building a legacy. Um, you know, trying to prepare for that next generation to take the what do they call it the baton and run with it and take all the FASD research um, and application to the next generation so that the the impacts will be profound, yes. right? We yes. wanna take the ripples that we're making and turn them into a tsunami um, because that's what the statistics are in terms of the prevalence, right? We've gone from um, you know, 1% to, well, maybe it's more like 5%. And now the CDC is saying one in seven pregnancies are exposed. That's 14.28%. Yeah. That's a tsunami of people that need to be understood in different ways, right? And supported in different ways than our systems are designed for. So we have a lot of work to do and, um, and, and collectively we do have a legacy to leave. Um, and, and it is a passion. That was the other piece that I really, you know, peaked on, um, you know, learning about FASD is one of those topics that you can't just learn about it and go back to life as usual. It changes you. Once you realize how profound the impacts are on an individual's life, on their family's life, you know, and as that ripples out into community, um, you know, you're changed. Yeah. And, you know, if you had asked me a year and a half ago, literally a year and a half ago, did I ever see myself writing a book or hosting a podcast? I would have said, okay, let's lock you up in the loony bin for a little while because <laughs> that's not going to happen. <laughs> and here we are. So, <laughs> yeah. um, yeah. So I, as, as you mentioned, Jody, I am going to be re-releasing sip by sip candid conversations with people diagnosed as adults with FASD. Um, because, you know, when I came into this, it was children and families that brought me to the table but then when I realized how many millions of us there are, you know, with a diagnostic rate of 0.01%, yes. that's millions upon millions of us wandering the earth who never understood that our struggles in life 
had their roots in biology, in neurology. And diagnosis changes everything and nothing at the same time, right? We, nothing right. in our past will be undone or redone, but it changes our perspective so profoundly and the way we see ourselves, the grace we can offer ourselves, that it is life-changing. And, um, you know, I just want to thank you, Jody, for coming alongside me and just, you know, walking with me in this path. Um, I, I am so honored to be one of our, our collaboration, which we now call ourselves the FASD Meliorists. Um, yeah, which I love that. Can can you tell everyone what that means? <laughs> well, a little bit. It means that we take, we believe that human beings, that while we walk this earth and, and are alive, that we have the opportunity to change the world for better, that we can make things that maybe aren't as good as we want them. We can we can change them. And so um, that's what our group has done. And, and I think what's really interesting is all of us are professionals mm -hmm. and we all have had lots of life experience in working with people and therapies and education and, and behavior. We, we've all had that. And, and yet we all have different skills and none of us have the money to buy the skills from anybody, but we all have come together and we have them. So, you know, I share mine with you and you share yours with me and Antonia shares hers and Deb shares hers and all of a sudden and Marsha shares hers and all of a sudden we have what we need to get the job done yeah. without any funding yeah. which is which is a miracle it is absolutely a miracle and I think the other thing that's been very interesting is that I've never come together with a group of people before in this unity where there are there are no egos we've laid all our egos down we've all remained humble um, we all are willing to to listen and and take criticism and to reinvent and to be flexible and to hear from, I don't know how many hundreds, you know, we've got a couple hundred years of experience in mm -hmm. this and we're willing to take those walks, those life paths yeah. that we've walked and 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 nurture them and yeah. and then and then not just nurture them, but but to discuss them and and come up with new, new pieces from the constellations yeah. we've walked. And that's just really exciting. Yeah. yeah. It it has been such a joy and privilege to sit down with you and the other ladies. And and I we are going to do an episode toward the end of summer with all of us together. Um a meet the meliorists kind of thing. But and where we can, you know, all talk collectively about this process of polishing each other's works so mm -hmm. that it can shine its brightest. Um, and, and not, we're also working on other things too, right? So you have, yeah. um, you have embracing Zach, you mentioned that Zach is a, um, he's a composite, right? right? So this comes from the work that Joel or Justin did yeah. with Joel, hundreds of interviews. Yeah, Joel Joel did hundreds of interviews. I did a few, but I came alongside Joel in 2017 and he yeah. he um yeah, we worked we've worked years on trying to get this stuff kind of fruition and then this yeah. last year it was like, okay, step out and Joel stepped out and yeah. and he was hoping to do a documentary and he will do the documentary. But yeah. but looking at it uh pragmatically, we said uh, and I wasn't part of this. They actually called me. I was part of the consulting for FASD, but not the writing of the novel. Um, they determined that it, that we needed something that the public would embrace, mm -hmm. something that the public would love, um, yeah. something that would resonate with their hearts. And at that point, they took my whitest wall and had read it and said, could you rewrite this? You know, 20 years ago, when you first penned it in 2004 and published in 2008, could you take that same that same concept of how you did it but not the not the the method or not the themes and yeah. rewrite it for themes in 2024 and and that was pretty exciting because yeah. that um, I I had thought that the whitest wall was done you know it, it won international awards and it was great but you know it, it never it never progressed and yeah. so to have the opportunity to do it a second time was really cool yeah so 
<clears throat> I have ordered The Whitest Wall, have not read it yet. I'm looking forward to reading it. Um, it needs to be on Audible. Yeah. <laughs> Along with Sit by Sip and Embracing Zach. So that's going to be future projects for us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And for the team. But um, in, in essence, when you say it's composite to everyone, what she's talking about was looking at the characteristics of everyone that Joel had interviewed who's living with FASD and building a character that best represents all of our experiences, yeah. right? And so, you know, just like with FASD, not all of us do all the things that this character named Zach does, um, but Zach is gonna feel very familiar to all of us, whether we are living with FASD or married to someone who is, or, you know, parenting someone who is, we're all going to be able to relate to Zach. And um, yeah, it's really cool. The other thing um, <clears throat> about this book, and just for the record, I'm, I'm wait, I'll be writing the foreword to this book as soon as I finish reading the latest rendition, since you yep. are Edition. tweaking it. Yes, the, since you are tweaking it to better align with the script, yeah. with the movie script. <clears throat> I loved it the first time through. Absolutely loved it. And I'm so excited to see how the changes are going to work out. I'm just like, when's that scene coming? I want to read it. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, it's it's it's, like, it's coming up. It's coming up. But yep. that's, why, that's why the chapter I just finished took six hours to re-edit because it ha yeah. it was pivotal to make it pivotal pivotal <laughs> to make it to make it um, go in the direction that the yeah. movie goes but not so much that it changes the novel and yeah. and there's that balance that you have to do yeah. so i think yeah. one thing i wanted to say is that not only is it a composite character but it's a composite community you know yes. it's um the 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 mm -hmm. characters are um are the the justice system the educational system, um, the the employer, mm -hmm. the friends, the community. It, it gives you a broader sense of, of different viewpoints and how we see the world with our own lens and then adapt or, and how Zach sees the world in his lens and you yeah. get a chance to get inside everybody. And that, that I think was really, really been yeah. fun to put together. And, and it also introduces people to other forms of neurodivergence as well. It does. It and does. really highlights the importance of embracing neurodiversity, that we're all different. You know, all of us with our particular quirks and our particular strengths and our particular learning style, um, we're each as unique as our fingerprint. Yeah. And this book highlights that. And, and in a good way. In a good way. It, it does. It, it takes the person it as a celebrates person. it. It celebrates the person, and and what I hope it does is it it takes um, you know, it takes the veteran and makes it sparkle. Mm -hmm. It takes the person with um, autism spectrum disorder and and mm -hmm. highlights them in in their in their integrity and who they are. And it takes mm -hmm. it takes the people that have ex life experience and allows people to understand. But even more so, yeah. it takes parents and and aunts yeah. and uncles and neighbors, and it yeah. it makes it. It makes it a part of our community, not yeah. just a hidden piece, but a piece that's like, oh, aha, I get yeah. that. Oh my goodness, I thought that yeah. too. And, you know, and it oh, deals it with yeah. It deals with things like unplanned pregnancies. It deals with um, emotional abuse and emotional neglect. It yeah. deals. I mean, the I think the only piece that is not blatantly out there is social services. That's in um, whitest wall. There we go. That okay. is in Whitest Wall. But that okay. Whitest Wall was a whole different season. It was prior right. to in 2008 that it was it was written. Yeah. Um, we had not, um, we had a complete, I used at that point faith and, and race to expose things that we understood as prejudice. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I mean, you got to think 20 years ago, no one was talking about the things I wrote. And, yeah. and we saw the festering that happened during COVID um, yeah. of exactly what I wrote in 2004, 2008, yeah. and it came to fruition. And I, you know, I just, it, it was not my dream. My dream was to 
to expose it. Well, I exposed fetal alcohol and, yeah. and have people embrace what we needed to embrace then. Well, now we're trying a different thing. We're trying neurodiversity, right? So yeah. same style, of, same style of, of writing, although my writing has changed in 20 years, of course, but yeah. 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 Well, I'm, I'm excited to see where you came from in terms of your writing um, and, and to see how you, how you dealt with that system as well. Um, I just, I've, and I've already had questions, by the way, on when is the book going to be available Okay, from so the last time it was discussed. Right. Well, that's good. I want people yeah. to be excited. I want this to be exciting. Uh, Zach is going to launch. Um, I'm hoping I had hoped in March and Joel asked me, he said, Joe, hold back, hold back. I want the screenplay to be done. I want you. And it's like, OK, so, you know, this little racehorse had to stand the starting gate. And I'm, I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I did. It's been very difficult to do the, the fifth edit and now the sixth. Yeah. Um, but but it's made it better. And I want to say, you know, the Melioris have made a glisten because that's really been fun to watch, watch the, you guys just take it and, and make it even better. I'm hoping June, I'm, I mean, we are so close. This is the final, this is the final edit. Um, it's very close. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping to launch it right at the beginning of the launch of Red Shoes Rocks. Um, you know, I, I want to say anybody that's got buildings to light up, landmarks to light up, I want them lit up in red for mm -hmm. September 9th. So uh, anybody want to know about that, go to redshoesrock.com. All the information of how to make that happen is there. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, um, you can email me through Red Shoes Rock and I will I will get you the information for that. But we want the world to light up red. And, and the whole thing is about launching. We're not going to talk about what this is, but the book is um, the book is on launching. And, and we are, um, hang on one second. My dogs sure. are going crazy. I need to shut the office door. You know, there's, there's a okay. lot of launching. Oops. I'll start again. There's a lot of launching taking place. So we're launching Zach and we're launching Red Shoes Rock. And this year, our, our, our goal is to light up the world. Australia did an incredible job last year. Incredible. Canada did a great job. I mean, Niagara Falls and mm -hmm. Toronto Towers. Minneapolis is going to, has already agreed to I-35W and the Lowry Bridge. And um, uh, I think we've got a couple towers lighting up. So I'd love to light up the whole city in red. But we're, we're going to get what we get. And last year, I've got to share this. This little six-year-old in little red shoes said, oh, mom, somebody really cares about us and our FASD, oh, mom. Yeah. And I mean, isn't that precious? It, yeah. Think about it. Because guess what? It is not something that people tend to care about. Yeah. And, yeah. Yet, and yet it's around a lot, a lot, yeah. a lot. So yeah, ask me about red shoes and I'll, I'll answer. Yeah. So, you know, when, when I had RJ on, um, I guess what a month or two ago at this point, um, we talked about how he, he I, I asked him about red shoes rock and he's like, well, you know, the crazy thing is I was at a conference and some lady came up to me and asked me about my red shoes. So I told her. It's like, I know who that was. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. so you took that from being his personal expression of identity and, you know, advocacy. And you turned it into a worldwide movement. <laughs> <laughs> yes, is that FASD or what? Totally grandiose. No, <laughs> I, I but, never. But what all is available for people if they were to go to your website what what all is available for oh. people and how can they get involved okay so there are there's a blog the blog has uh, a lot of information dig through that you're going to see it it should things should be categorized so you should be able to find things um, otherwise just scroll down through that there's free artwork all our artwork is free everything's grassroots uh, my goal was to keep it available to to the people that the people all over the world, no matter if as long as they had a computer, they could do their own thing. So we've got mm -hmm. um, multiple logos in different languages, and and I'm really willing to send out the original art files so that people can change it to any language that they want to write in it. And and any of the artwork, you know, everything is just we just gave it as a gift. I mean, mm -hmm. we had no money to do it. Um, 
my my son from Sweden challenged me, hey, could you see what you could do on social media, mom? I want to see what you can make happen. And that's when I took the red shoes. Um, what RJ didn't say to you, though, was that he was having a hard time with the person at the counter at that point. And I saw that he was struggling with this person. And I saw his red shoes and I thought, I can divert him. I mean, what I do is behavior, right? I do mm -hmm. animal behavior. And I'm not saying we're animals, but what I'm saying is that at least in, if I can redirect, I can get I can get a different response. So I went up and said, hey, tell me about your red shoes to change the conversation, right? To start a conversation. And, and then that's kind of how it all started. And the other thing that was happening was Fast Day was dying. There was no momentum um, in 2013. The momentum had had left. the The people that had had um, the first wave of of the pioneers had retired, and the next generation hadn't taken it on. And we really needed it. and And that's why everything we do right now is so important for me yeah. to encourage you know, twenty year olds, thirty year olds, forty year olds because because my season isn't that much longer, and I'm gonna be I'm gonna be out of here. And, and I want to make sure that that they've got the passion and they've got the materials and they've got they they have permission to use whatever they need to do to make it happen. So yeah, 2013 we did 30 days, and 2014 we did 40 days, and then we did or I mean we did 60 days, and then we did 90 days. Then we thought, well, why don't we do 99 days to 909? And that just kind of put us at June 1st, which was my daughter's birthday. And I'm thinking, yeah, she's the one That's that perfect. kicked me kicked me off into this let's let's yeah. kick off on nine nine and and make a difference the goal of of red shoes rock was was to expose information and to build the momentum up to nine nine so we weren't mm -hmm. trying to take away from nine nine i was looking at making it something that was precious to people and mm -hmm. and making the month of september be something we looked at it, it, there was no adult voice at that point when we started it mm -hmm. RJ really had the only adult voice, which was flying the broken wings. And he did, was doing a great job, mm -hmm. but it was brand new. It was new. It was pretty new. And um, I wanted and to- it's a terrific that. group. It is yeah. because it's- for, for those who don't know, it is a group within Facebook. Um, and primarily it's, it's two populations within this group. One, those of us living with FASD and those of us caring for people with FASD, whether it's caregivers or professionals. And I think the important thing about that group is RJ has held strong yeah. to not letting there be negativity or conflict. Yeah. And when there is, they have a full crew on the backside that go and counsel. Yeah. Uh, and, and what he's also required and the team has required is caregivers and persons living with FASD have to learn how to talk to each other and to get along. Yeah. And no other group is doing that. You know, there's groups for caregivers, there's groups for whining, there's groups for complaining. You don't get to do that on RJ's group. And you yeah. don't get to do that at Red Shoes Rock. At Red Shoes yeah. Rock, we're all about fun. We're all about exposure. We're all about um, having, you know, making this not be such a negative thing. It's We are just yeah. living life. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it, you have been truly a powerhouse we, you know, within the FASD movement. And <clears throat> I hope you say, I'm not going to be around that much longer. I hope you, I hope you'll be around for a while. <laughs> <laughs> and I know there's a lot of things that, that we feel like we want to complete. Right. But, you know, being another woman of faith as I am, I know that sometimes our agenda is not what God would have for us to do. And, and we may, we may wrap up sooner than we anticipate, or we may find ourselves saying, okay, what next? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, learning the caregiver model, you and I are both in caregiving, you caregive your mom and I, and I'm in, and I'm embracing a caregiving situation that's 24 seven um, with, with my daughter. And I share it with Sam, her partner. And, um, that 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 actually brought forth my FASD. I was able to mask pretty well mm -hmm. until um, I had to deal with raw humanity. And I've dealt with raw humanity, you know, in spurts my whole life. Yeah. Every one of us do. We all have that happen. But 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 every single day, 24 hours a day, 
and all the medical professionals and all the the intensity of what we've dealt with and all the surprises because of FASD and the organic damage um, have been have not just been mind boggling for me, but for all for the doctors and the nurses and the professionals too. Yeah. And trying to hold that on a on a steady course yeah. with understanding that we're dealing with organicity and we are and we are dealing with symptoms. I mean, nobody wakes up from deep sleep with behaviors. You just don't do that. Yeah. You, know, you don't do that in the animal world as, as a, you know, and you don't do that in, you know, with, with the humans. So, yeah. yeah. So you don't buy the, I got up on the wrong side of bed thing. Now, my daddy said that if I got up on the wrong side of bed, I had to go in back to bed and get up on the other side until I was ready to get up on the other side. I wasn't allowed out of bed. And I, you know, being the energizer bunny, I was, that was, and I wanted to be outside running, you know, running in the woods and the streams and making, making crazy time outside. I was bound and determined to figure out how to get in a good mood before I got out of bed. Yeah. 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 I, <laughs> that's so funny because I mean, you are the energizer bunny in human form. Beep, beep. Truly. <laughs> Truly. I I could, when you were talking about, you know, when Joel said, hold on, and you're in the starting gate. I mean, I could just picture you in a starting gate, just kind of bucking against the gate. When can I go? When can I go? I know. I know. <laughs> waiting, I know. waiting can be hard. <laughs> and it, the good news was, is I had a lot of overgrowth in my gardens and I had a lot of weed pulling and digging to do so. Yeah. It kept me, it kept me focused in a different direction. Yeah. So we, um, that is probably one of the most profound things that we've been able to put into words as the meliorists. When we look at the impact of prenatal alcohol exposure, it is first and foremost, I mean, while it, while yes, it's absolutely a whole body diagnosis, it is a physical ailment more than anything or physical condition rather yeah. more than anything. I mean, even within our mind, we call that physiology neurology, right? Within the body, we call it, you know, whatever the diagnosis might be for whatever body system. But going back to my training in the neurobehavioral model, we talk about making that shift from, you know, away from behavior as chosen, right? Because you can't sticker chart away brain damage or the effects of brain injury, right? Which is a much nicer way to phrase it. Um, but that's what it is. We, our, our brains have been injured. You know, yeah. a, a chemical IED has gone off and disrupted the structures and disrupted the the functionality of those structures of everything and, i mean of our tiniest of tiny i think that's what you yeah. have to look at the mitochondria the tiniest of nerves the yeah. tiny you know the, the vessels the all of the little capillaries those yeah. things that 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 may be stronger for another person may be affected for someone with fasd it takes out the it takes out the littlest yeah, yeah. but we we cannot use psychological means on neurological problems right it won't work it does you know, not work which is why sticker charts don't work so and let me... why the the red light green light yellow light you know color chart stuff doesn't work <laughs> you know you can't motivate away brain injuries you no. know we we wouldn't tell a blind student you could read the board if you tried harder yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? and, and you can't scold it away Right. And you can't punish it away and you, you or know, shame it away. No, I, I found in, in training, because I do have a program called Expanding Minds with Canines for Persons with Neurodiversity, that you can fun it away, you can respect it away, and you can try it away. But I have never been able to do it with any other tools. Those are the tools that get me where I want to go. I want to share one thing, because I think this is important. A lot of our people have headaches. Hmm. And when Liz went into dialysis, she had 134 days of headaches. Now, I, 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 re I, I reared her, right? So I know that she, I know what a headache was for her. She started headaches when she was six. At least that's when she understood what they were. And, and I know what level those headaches were. And I know 
you know, I, I had massage ways, ways to massage her and help her and body work that we were able to do. But these 134 days were like nothing we'd experienced before. Now we have to put this back into 2020 of 9-11, 2020. In, in, and I just want to share this in, in January, they gave her Botox because they thought it was in her head. And that if they just took the tension out of her head, they would take care of it. Fast forward four years. And we find out that the, the um, headaches, which no longer worked with Botox because they were so severe. And she would wake up from sleeping in dialysis with outbursts of pain they discovered that the intracranial pressure in her brain reached 40 at hour two of dialysis. That's, that's, that's physiological, that's organic, that's mm -hmm. neurological. And when they tried to help her by increasing the number of days of her dialysis, her, the fluid in her brain wasn't allowed to even go back. So the headaches even got worse. Mm -hmm. You know, um, That's what I don't want to happen to our people. I don't want something that would have been able to be fixed probably 10 years ago, you know, like even like a tethered spine for, for Mac, your check, or, you know, for this thing, hydrocephalus for my daughter, none of us knew, but we've got to look deeper. Our professionals mm -hmm. have to look deeper. And if, if we can promote that, yeah, it's going to change the world for the, for our lives of our, the people that have been prenatal exposed. That is such a good point because so often doctors may wonder about FASD, but because there's no available documentation of confirmation of alcohol use, as is seldom the case for our population that come through foster care and adoption, yeah. they'll say, well, let's just run with the ADHD or let's just run with the autism spectrum disorder diagnoses because, you know, they, they, they have so many of the same symptoms, but they can access services with these other diagnoses. And since the FASD is not, we can't confirm it. And plus with the stigma, we'll just leave it alone and we'll run with the services we can get. Right. But what so that does is it without the proper diagnosis, people will never know that they are at a higher risk of 428 comorbid physical conditions. Yeah, Patty, it gets worse than that because of the checked boxes to get those diagnoses, to get the services. Um, Liz was was checked boxed um, depression and anxiety. She doesn't have depression and anxiety, but that mental health diagnosis to get the services she wanted, not knowing in 2007 that what it was going to do or 2008 has mm -hmm. caused her incredible complications mm -hmm. for the next, you know, Oh my gosh, it's, you know, 15 years, yeah, 15 years of misdiagnosis because of two check boxes. We have to be very, we have to have services available for our people in the right order, not in, yeah. in this kind of situation. Yeah. 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 It be, you know, knowing what we have a higher risk for is part of our medical history. Yeah. And is critical information for differential diagnosis, no matter who the doctor is. Yeah. You know, in, in Liz's case, you know, a urologist or um, nephrologist, right, will look at her very differently depending on the other diagnoses in play. Exactly. An endocrinologist, mm -hmm. you know, we, we've seen that already, you know, and what, what was what is projected. And, and I think the other piece is, is we have to realize that some of us have learned to mask very well in mm -hmm. public and with doctors, and we've learned to just keep our, our, our mouth shut and watch. And, and others are trying to gather their constellations. They're trying to figure out what's going on in this environment. So if you walk into a doctor's office and you get a whole 15 minutes with them, that's it, right? Maybe 10. And you're trying to figure things out and you're looking at the the fly on the wall or the, the, the poster on the wall, or, and you're asking and you're speaking, you're an oral person and you're speaking it out. Um, and you're, you're flipping your head around looking and you know, they are going to judge. And if you've got a check box of anxiety, they're going to check that off as high anxiety versus mm -hmm. data gathering to pull together 
where am I? Who am I with? What am I supposed to do? And because they're present, right? You can't, right. You can't plan that future. So you're now in your present and you've got to develop what you need to know, but you don't have much time to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think it's, we're going to be looking at different forms of anxiety um, that, that um, which is information gathering versus, you know, that true internal. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and they both and, exist. And there is some of that, right? Because if, for example, we know that we tend to have on days and off days as a great many of us do, that's anxiety provoking as you know, when you wake up and think, is this going to be a good day? Am I going to remember all the things I need to remember today? Or am I going to be tripping over my feet today yeah. and embarrassing myself or my loved ones? You know, that kind of thing um, does create some anxiety. And, you know, when we fall on our face often enough, well, who wouldn't feel a little down? Yeah. You know, and but those are the anxiety and the depression are the byproducts That's right. of a poor fit between us and our environment. Yeah. Right. A poor they're the byproducts of not having the right supports in place. It, it's right. It's why the right programming where where they where you feel trusted and you feel safe, yeah. why you get the results you do versus when you have to go into a situation where you're apprehensive and don't feel listened to. Right. And, and in, in most cases, at least for, for the people that I've worked with, it has to be active. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, 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 it's uh, mobility, it's moving, it's, 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 um, it can be loud, it can be soft, it can be slow, it can be fast, but it's going to be, it's going to be active and it's going to be laughter and fun. And once I've got that, then I start building the, the foundation yeah. for new, new learning. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, thank cause you. we can't, you know, learning cannot take place when we are anxious or when we are angry. Yeah. Um, it, it's just impossible. There is only one place you can learn. And, and you know this when you're, when you're a behaviorist is you can only learn when someone's interested, mm -hmm. even, you know, on each side of that, you've got comfort and you've got excited. You've got a little bit of learning possibly in comfort and you've got a little bit of learning in excited, but the only segment in, in your world that you can really learn in is when you're excited. And there's, mm -hmm. there's eight, you know, if you go with Susan Garrett's program, there's eight segments. Now that is animal behavior therapy, but you know, those eight things take you to meltdown. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if I'm teaching, my goal is not to be in meltdown, but to move them from meltdown down to interest. Yeah. Um, and there's a whole, there's a whole sequence of steps to do that. And yeah. And with animals, it's not, it's not a sequence that you do um, talking. There's no, you know, cognitive behavior therapy there. Um, no. You don't, you don't do that. You do that yeah. with um, action. I, I've tried talking to my animals. It doesn't go very well. Oh, well, actually I have a talking dog, but <laughs> um, she doesn't say a lot, but she can say out, out right now. Oh. And she can say out, out, run around. Now they're different. Out, out right now means I've got to go potty and out, out run around means I'm going out to play. And um, she will come right up to your face and let you know. Uh, but again, even with animals, it's really difficult because um, she had that. And then she said, um, war right now. She wanted water. Mm -hmm. And I thought she wanted water. So I went down to get water. War right now. And like, Piper, this is water. War right now. She doesn't say no, thank goodness. And and I go, not Piper, there's water. She said, dog water. He said, dog water? Dog water. So I, I went and got the dog water dish, which was a special dish that we that I took for walking. And I got her the dog water and she was pretty much happy. And she said, dog water. I did not figure it out. It took six months before I understood. She wanted to walk. Oh. <laughs> she, quit. she quit talking because I did not understand. Oh, yeah. But yeah. how often do we have that happen with humans? How often do we have that happen? When we of? quit trying yeah. because we're not understood. And she wanted to walk. She wanted to go for a walk. And she thought she trusted me thinking I would take care of her needs because I could get her food because she'd say hungry right now. She'd say, I'll, I'll right now. I'll, I'll run around. And she said, water. But water didn't mean water. It meant walking. Walk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I always took the water bowl with me when we were walking. 
Yeah. So I, and that note, I want to say, let's keep running, Patty, because we're going to make this happen. And um, yeah. I know I got to go run across the, the, the you through the go medicine garden. Or to, yeah, I got to go run across the medicine garden to her garage. So we're, we yeah. live right next door. Well, thank you for your time, Jody, and another great episode of Living with FASD. Um, for those of you who are interested, please go on over to patreon.com slash living with FASD podcast. You can join this community for free. And um, but you can also, if you're interested in joining in um, the costs of producing this uh, podcast um, for a very, you know, just a fraction <laughs> less than what you would pay for one weekly cup of coffee, which is not much considering I'm a two cup of gal day. Um, yeah, five dollars a month, ten dollars a month, fifteen dollars a month. That's that's nothing in the scheme of things. If the content I bring you has blessed you, then consider. Um, you know, helping me with the expenses toward putting this podcast forth. Um, and so I hope you will do that. There's also, you know, good places on Facebook. If you want to join communities there, there are, you know, when I was researching Facebook communities, putting the appendix together for sip by sip a year ago, there were 90 groups for people with FASD between the caregiving groups and the lived experience groups, there's over 90. So there's lots of support out there. Uh, we talked about one already, the Flying with Broken Wings site is magnificent. Um, so please join those communities, um, support if you're able, write to me at livingwithfasdpodcast at gmail.com if you have questions for Jody or questions because she'll be coming back from time to time. Uh, go team Meliorist. <clears throat> or if you have um you know questions that you want me to to bring a guest on to address. If you have topics you you'd like to learn more about, um, you know, please give, you know, I'm here for you. This is uh this is your podcast. And this is your space. And I just thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen to this episode. And I hope that you have a great week and that you will join us again next Monday on Living with FASD. Thank you, everybody. Have a great week.